Hey there guys, in today's video I wanted to show you guys one of my large outdoor aviaries and more specifically walk you guys through how I provide a variety of different types of perching in a large outdoor aviary. So if that's something you guys are interested in seeing, you want to make sure to stick around because that's going to be coming up right after this. Hey there guys, this is Jack over at High Red Bird, where I am tirelessly working to find new ways to make the keeping of exotic animals and pets more exciting, more affordable, and ultimately more enjoyable. <clears throat> I also just inhaled a bug, so hopefully you guys can understand me. Now, in today's video, I wanted to show you guys this outdoor aviary and walk you through how I put in a variety of different forms of perching in an outdoor aviary because a larger outdoor space is going to provide uh, more challenges than just having a cage in your living room uh, or somewhere else in your house. You know, this is a much bigger space. It's a lot harder to deal with this. You're usually going to want much larger perches as well. So I wanted to show you guys a couple of different ways that I provide perching in a larger space. So I guess the first question you guys are going to have is how big is a larger space? Now this enclosure is going to be front to back 20 feet long, it is 10 feet wide, and it is about 7 feet tall. Uh, it's probably a little bit closer to 8 on the edges, but there is a little bit of sag in the center where the wire dips down from the weight of it. Um, but this is a good sized enclosure for the birds that are in here. We have a mixture of umbrella and Moluccan cockatoos, though of course I have a tripod in here which is terrifying, so they have to be as far away from it as humanly possible. Or rather as birdly possible. So they're mostly hiding in the back. Now we do also have some chickens in here. And I know that chickens can be a little bit of a controversial issue with parrot keepers, some saying that they should never be anywhere near your birds. Now in my experience it's really going to come down to the individual situation weighing the pros and cons of having chickens on the ground underneath your parrots. Where I live Sarcocystis is a major concern. Now that's going to be a parasite that is primarily going to affect old world birds. So birds from Africa, Asia, and Australia, which is going to include our cockatoos. Now that life cycle of that parasite is going to have a variety of different forms. And one of the easiest ways to control that, uh, one of the forms of its life cycle is hosted by roaches. So by having chickens, in the enclosure, they will pick off any bugs that come into this area, uh, which then helps to protect these birds from sarcocystis. So it's a great way to help protect the birds, but I will say not every breed of chicken is going to be able to do this job. You're going to want a calmer breed of chicken. Uh, so right now here I have some Polish crested chickens, but you can also use things like Saramas, Bantam chickens. You want to look for chickens that are going to have a temperament that is noticeably calmer than average. The other benefit you get from having chickens in this enclosure is if you have birds that like to throw food on the ground, which let's be honest, all parrots like to throw their food on the ground, uh, they are going to go ahead and clean up any of those little bits in between you cleaning up the enclosure. Uh, so it just helps to keep that overall enclosure a little bit cleaner. But <clears throat> enough about the space, enough about these birds. Let me go ahead and walk you guys through a couple of the different ways that I provide perching in this enclosure. All right, guys. So one of the first ways I like to provide perching in an enclosure is by providing PVC swings and stands that can be mounted to the top of the enclosure. You see it's just got an eyelet at the top, uh, and then it's quick linked into place. So what that means is when I want to re-perch this enclosure, I can just detach that uh, and put it elsewhere in the enclosure. Now these perches are going to be texturized. Uh, so the good news is that means it's going to have a lot more grip for your birds. The bad news is it's going to create a lot more spaces where dirt can collect. So I do have to go through with these perches a couple of times a year, run them down with a pressure washer. Uh, and these perches have actually not been done for a couple of months. So I just wanted to show you guys, this is about as bad as they're going to get. So uh, ultimately that's not that bad. You see this one only has that one connection up at the top. 
but it does have multiple perches that the birds will come on. Uh, I can put other hanging items nearby, like that basket feeder, to encourage them to stand on this, to reach over for it. Uh, I've also installed some eyelets on the, this swing as well, so that I can add other toys. Now, if these PVC hanging branches and hanging perches uh, are something that you guys would like to see me do in future videos, go ahead and let me know in the comment section down below, because I can do that. Uh, and then we also have, here's just a basic swing. Now, we all know that there are the little swings that are made for things like budgies, for maybe cockatiels, uh, but all the swings are gonna be very, very lightweight. So here, I have built one that is made for my cockatoos. It is about two and a half feet tall, uh, so it gives them more than enough room that they can actually climb onto it, they can swing around on it. Now, speaking of PVC, one of my favorite ways to attach perches is going to be just using a PVC Y fitting, that's this one right here, that's just going to be attached to the outside wire. Now right now I just have a small piece of willow in there uh, to give the bird something to chew on. If I wanted to change out their perching, I could give them things like bamboo or large willow branches that I then put in here and the birds would be able to stand on it as well. Now one of the main ways that I will use perching is to use different branches uh, of what I call browse, which is effectively going to be uh, edible plants for birds. So I have a couple of different ways that I'm going to secure them. The first one is just getting absolutely massive pieces and securing them uh, by just putting the heaviest portion down on the ground uh, and just seeing where it secures up at the top uh, and then just securing it to the wire right there. I will also take branches and I will secure them to the out or to the inside of the enclosure. Um, but basically use a fork in the branch to just give me somewhere where I can anchor new branches. Uh, and then I can also take branches, mount them into those supports, attach them up at the top as well. And that's just gonna give me a couple different places uh, that I can secure those branches to get them you know, nice and stable. Uh, now, all of those methods are going to use the exact same way of using wire to attach those perches to that enclosure. In fact, let me go ahead and show you guys that right now. All right, guys, now if you want to install perching in an enclosure, there's a couple of things you're going to need. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is a piece of perching. Uh, now, I actually did a video on how to select appropriate browse items, or rather, edible plant items for your animals. So I'll put uh, a link in that video right up there. Basically, you wanna make sure that it's not something that is toxic to your animal. You wanna make sure that it is something that is not a physical danger to your animal. And you want to make sure that it hasn't been treated with pesticides or any other chemicals that might be an issue for your animal. So here I have a piece of hackberry that's gonna be safe for everything that's in here. Uh, although, as you may notice, this one is a little bit small. Uh, this whole perch is pretty much done just for the sake of demonstrating this technique. Uh, now, if you use larger perches, what you may need is another person to help you in just holding these perches into position while you are securing them. Uh, one little piece like this, I'll be able to show you guys no problem. Uh, another thing you wanna keep in mind uh, is how you trim and prep this uh, piece of wood. So at the base of the wood, you can see I've drilled a hole. Uh, if you have a node there, you can go ahead and secure around that, but drilling a hole at the base is usually the easiest, at least for me. Uh, up at the top, you can see where we start getting the forks of branches. I usually like to go uh, maybe an inch or two past where that fork is, trim there, because then I can secure wire there, and that's gonna give it a good amount uh, of hold onto the wire. Now, when you are attaching a perch, you want to try to figure out which way the perch wants to sit, because if you're trying to do this and the perch is consistently wanting to go back to that, it's going to be fighting you the entire time. So go ahead, try to figure out which way your perch is sitting, um, you know, and pick out a perch that is gonna do what it is you want it to do. So if you have smaller birds, uh, things like budgies, cockatiels, finches, you may want some uh, finer branches and a whole lot of them so that you can get a variety of birds interacting with each other on one space. Uh, you know, that'll help them with their social needs. 
Uh, but if you have bigger birds, you probably don't want things to be that delicate. You want to have larger branches. Uh, you don't want to have anything that leg bands or anything else could get caught on. Uh, but you're going to need a perch. You're probably going to need a second person in order to install things like this. Uh, you are also going to need some baling wire. Now that is just going to be a steel wire. Uh, it's not treated with anything, so it will eventually rust. But uh, I haven't seen any issues with it with my birds. This is uh, a method of attaching perches that is used by both zoos and professional breeders uh, that's been used for decades. And realistically, uh, if you're worried about the wire rusting through and being an issue, I can guarantee you that the perch is going to give out first. So use a piece of wire, attach it. Once your perch needs to be replaced, go ahead, cut it out, uh, throw that piece of wire away, recycle it, whatever you're going to do with it, but don't reuse it for your bird. Um, and then just put up a new perch with new wire. Uh, you're also going to need some lineman pliers to attach it. Now these are basically gonna be uh, a set of pliers, but they do have wire cutters built into them. So it's great, it's the only tool you'll need in order to do this. Um, if you guys don't already have them, the lineman pliers or the baling wire, I will put links in the description section down below. Uh, but let me go ahead, bring you guys in a little bit closer to the wire so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing uh, and the considerations that I make when wiring a perch into an enclosure. All right guys, so what we're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna figure out where you want to secure your perch. Uh, now I'm gonna wanna secure it right here. Uh, and the only reason I want to secure it there is because that's in the line of sight of the camera. Um, obviously, this is the outside of the enclosure. I decided to do it out here because uh, this way I don't get cockatoos trying to help me. Uh, you may need to move your birds from your area um, or have someone or something to help distract them while you are putting in new perches because they do like to help. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and feed this wire through the hole that I drilled into the perch. So you can see that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and feed it through. I wanna make sure to grab the wire in at least two places. Now the reason for that is if it starts pulling, it's gonna be pulling on two different places. If I only had it on one section, uh, a bird jumping up and down on that could be enough to start popping the welds, which could weaken the integrity of the wire, which is something that we want to avoid. But once you get that perch in place where you think you want it, what you wanna do is go ahead, try to pull it as tightly as you can and get at least one good twist on it right there. Now we have a couple of things we wanna keep in mind. Uh, you wanna make sure that all of the wire is either close enough to the perch or the existing panels of wire that there is no chance of a bird's toe getting stuck in it. Or like you can see right here, there is enough room that uh, a toe can go in and come out easily. Uh, so you just want to make sure that you're looking for where something could get stuck. Now what you're going to do is you're going to grab the wire with your lineman pliers and you're going to pull while you twist. Make sure you are twisting in the same direction that you did that initial twist in, otherwise you'll be undoing the work you did before. So that was one. Sometimes you may just want to go ahead, reposition after every twist, go ahead, pull back, and go for a second one. Sometimes I will go up to three. Anything past three, I found there's a risk of the tension that it creates on the wire causing the wire to break. Uh, but that's gonna be pretty easy. Now I'm gonna go through with my lineman pliers. I'm gonna go ahead, trim this wire back. And now what we wanna do is go ahead and tuck this piece of wire under so it's not anywhere where the birds are going to interact with it. You may be inclined to try to hit the wire to get it to do that, uh, but I am going to advise against that because that is going to cause that wire to loosen up. So instead, use the end of your lineman pliers and just apply gentle, direct pressure to get it to go exactly where you want it to go. Then you can see how your perch is sitting. Uh, that wire is going to be out of the way. Uh, and you have the ability to mount that perch really, really easily. Uh, so it really is that simple. All right, guys, so as you can see, that is pretty simple and straightforward, and it works in a variety of different ways. Uh, so I can use that to attach those perches in, a different, uh, in different configurations around this enclosure. 
<clears throat> now, one of the things that I will do, and I'll show you guys from here, I'm not gonna get any closer because as you can see, they are a little bit terrified of the camera. Uh, I can use closet supports on either side of a two by four. Uh, I use this to give these birds a very strong, longer lasting perch inside their enclosure. Uh, I wanna make sure that their perch inside their sheltered area is easy to replace so that I can always make sure that they have good perching inside their sheltered area. So I use a two by four. This two by four that they have right now is about a week and a half old. And as you can see, uh, they have already started to do some work on it. Now I use steel powder coated closet supports, uh, which were a little bit of a pain in the butt to find. You can find uh, a variety of different closet supports, but some of them are just going to be zinc. Uh, obviously that's something you would want to avoid. Uh, and more often than not, they're not gonna tell you what they're made of. So I probably did find something that was useful before I settled on these, but uh, I wasn't sure they were safe. And when in doubt, I usually err on the side of being cautious, um, but I did find the steel powder coated supports. So I can secure a two by four there. I could either wire it, I could wire it the same way I do other perches. Um, but honestly, I just take a stainless steel screw, go through the bottom of that uh, closet support and screw into the two by four. Now that means that I do have to keep an eye on it on a daily basis to make sure that the birds aren't chewing through to be able to get to that screw. Uh, but that isn't something that they are going to do in a single day. Uh, at least my birds aren't. If that is a concern for your birds, I would definitely recommend wiring it or finding another means of securing that. Um, and then obviously if you have birds that aren't going to be running the risk of chewing through their perches, uh, if you have things like budgies, cockatiels, conures, uh, you know, you could obviously use those screws with no real concern at all. But here we've got, uh, so we have that one on that side, and then we also have another PVC swing uh, on the other side, that one has two supports. Uh, so that one really is just like a giant swing, um, you know, except you're not gonna go to a pet store and find a swinging perch that is uh, eight feet long, which is what that one is right there. Uh, so the birds will like to go on that as well. But that is just a couple of different ways that I provide perching for my birds in a large outdoor enclosure. All right, guys, now I certainly hope that was helpful. Uh, that is just a couple of different ways that I provide perching in a large outdoor enclosure. Uh, there's obviously going to be other ways that you guys can do it. So if you guys have any other ways that you suggest putting in perches, uh, you can go ahead, leave that down in the comment section below. Another option for perching, if you have built your own enclosure, you control the size of wire, so you may be able to use uh, some of those perches that you get for your cages, the ones that have a hanger bulbs, uh, washers, and a wing nut. And if you guys don't have any of those, uh, I actually did a video on how to make those, so I will include that as a card up there somewhere. Um, but the biggest issue you're going to have with those is installing them, because where I am right now, there is a door 10 feet away, uh, and then I would have to be on the other side of that just to have somebody who could secure the screws for me from the outside. So it's doable, especially if you have someone who is able to help you. Uh, most of the time when I do perching like this, I do it on my own. So that means that is going to be out of the question. Uh, but I certainly hope some of these other ideas uh, were helpful for you guys. If you guys want to see tutorials on how to do the PVC swings and hanging PVC perches, go ahead, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel where there are new videos coming out every single week. I do want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you guys next time. All right, thanks. I do need to say Bye. thank you to my Patreon patrons for helping to make these videos possible. You can find out more by visiting High Red Bird on Patreon or clicking the link in the description section down below if you would like more information. Thanks.